Okay, let's have a quick look at hybrid picking and explain what it is. Now, we know that normal picking is just taking the pick and picking on the strings. That's... Now, hybrid picking means that we use the pick and fingers. Now, there are quite a few combinations of this technique, but I want to give you the basic one to start off, and then we'll do uh, you know, a little bit more advanced stuff later on. So, in simple terms, we pick a note, and then we pick a second note with the second finger of our right hand. So, let's just have a quick look at that. I'm going to take this shape, and I'll explain this shape to you in a minute, because it's a nice lick. But uh, we're going to be on the D and B strings, okay? <laughs> And hopefully what you can see me do is picking that D string. And then it's kind of like a claw technique. If you can imagine this second finger being like a claw and it pulls upwards like that. Okay? And the nail is actually acting as a plectrum itself. Okay? So the finger actually sort of comes upwards like that. If you think like kind of like an eagle's claw. Now some people actually get their nail to try and be the same size as the plectrum or the other way around would probably be more um, you know applicable but uh, what I'm trying to say is I don't really worry about that but some country players for example uh, what they'll do is, is they'll try and buy a plectrum, plectrum that's the same thickness as, as their nail because I'm sure people's nails are different thicknesses even though I don't really go around looking but um, you know so some people are really particular about it but you know what I do is, is I just think, as, think of that finger as a different as another plectrum now you can also use a more sort of fleshy tone by putting the finger down there and sort of pulling upwards more with the okay with the flesh but the initial technique we're going to do is going to be picking finger but using that nail okay so let's look at a shape uh, that we can use this technique on so this shape is going to be a lick that's going to work over an E chord uh, especially in the blues or rock and roll and the shape that we're going to use is this okay so we have six on the D string played are going to be fifth on the B string we move that shape up so that now we have seven on the D and seven on the B and you can see it's my second and third finger playing that we move up a tone and play 9D and 9B. We can also put this one in the middle for chromatic chromaticism, which makes it like a chromatic passing tone, or two tones in this case. Okay, so we have that. But this one, just remember, doesn't stand out on its own. You know, you couldn't go over the chord, it has to be passing between the seven and nine. Okay, now I'm gonna do a demonstration to a backing track in a minute using this technique and it's gonna be three chords E, A and B. So I'm gonna give you uh, some other shapes that you can use. Now we're just gonna move over a string for the A chord and we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but it's just going to be on the G and high E strings this time. So it's going to be six on the G and five on the high E. Okay, then it's going to be seven on the G and high E. Move up a tone, nine on the G and high E. And remember that passing tone we can have, which will be on the eight G and eight high E, but remember it sounds odd on its own. So just as a passing tone. Okay, so we have E, A, for the B, we move the A one up a whole step, two frets, 
So that's going to be eight on the G, seven on the high E, nine on the G and high E, 11 on the G and high E, and then we can use that passing tone as well. Okay, so what I'm pretty much doing is playing the two notes together. But what you can do is play them separately, obviously, if you'd like. Okay, now I like to slide into these notes as well. So what I'll do is approach maybe from a semitone below. So hopefully what you can see me do there is taking that A shape and then just sliding from that 5G upper semitone then sliding into the next one. And I'll do all sorts of combinations where sometimes I'll stop them, sometimes I'll keep them ringing through, so. Okay, and I do that with the palm. This fleshy part of my hand here will basically, I think of it as like a piano dampener, you know those big dampeners that come down? And it damps the note. And make sure you get a nice snap on that B string. Then more legato. Okay, so nice combinations. Now this is a really, really good lick uh, to use this technique in its basic form. Okay, so I'm gonna play along with the backing track now. Uh, that's going to give you an idea of what this sounds like in a real context. And it's uh, like a rock and roll sort of feel in the key of E. Uh, now what I've done, I've extended the B and A chords slightly uh, to give you a little bit more time to play on those. So basically what will happen is we'll have an E, regular E, that will be for four bars, then we have an A for two bars, then an E for two bars, okay, then B for two bars, A for two bars, E for three bars, finish on B for one bar. And it's going to be a pretty much rec rock, uh, regular rock and roll type feel uh, to the backing track. Anyway, enough of my yakking. Let's go and have some playing and see what it sounds like. Okay, so hopefully what you heard me do there was a nice solo using these patterns, which actually, I think, outline the chords really well. Okay, I'm gonna add another little two-note pattern to this lick we already have, just to add a little bit of spice. Now, if it's a seventh chord you're using, an A7 or an E7, this is gonna work really well, but in most kind of, you know, rock and roll and blues and rock formats, you'll find this lick will work perfectly. So, what we have is What we're gonna do is take this first one and then we're gonna go down chromatically. Okay, so we've got six on the D and five on the B. We're gonna drop down a semitone and end up on four D and three on the B. 
and we can use this on every pattern. For the A, for the B, for the A, for the E. Okay, and also what I'm going to do in this next demonstration is try and use the patterns in other positions because what I've done, I've used the A here, but don't forget, obviously it's going to work on other parts of the guitar. For example, the A appears here again. Exactly the same notes, but this time it's going to be 11 on the D and 10 on the B, then 12 to 14 on the D and B strings. And that applies to, you know, basically all the shapes. So here's the E. We have the octave of the E. Okay, and then also using that dropping down as we mentioned just now. Okay, so this can be a really, really good way of also recognising where the chords are on the neck. Now, for me to go through every one of these shapes would probably take up a good part of the DVD. So uh, I'm going to leave you to work out some of the other positions, but they're really, really easy. All you need to do is just work out those notes and then just find them uh, on other parts of the guitar. Okay, so hopefully what you heard me do there was some melodic stuff, using the shapes, different positions on the neck this time, and also using that little extension that we put on previously.